Welcome to How the Guest Was Won, Tales from the Trails for Vacation Rental Pioneers. This is your host, Andy Medic, CEO of Stay Attention, former CEO of my own vacation rental management company, Sea Change Vacation Rentals, and most importantly, guest. To thrive as an operator in the wild west of today's vacation rental industry, you must get focused and clear on your brand and revenue strategy. In this podcast, through sharing our experiences as guests, and stories from our businesses, we'll explore the concepts, challenges, and common obstacles encountered while building vacation rental hospitality brands, regardless of scale. Vacation home pioneers, bring your voices, your stories, and join me on the trails as together, we build the true story of how the guest was won. Welcome to our preview episode of our new podcast. We're not hitting the trails just yet, since today we're going to be circling the wagons and gathering around our campfire for a look ahead at what our new show is about, how we'll format it in a unique way, and why you should care to join us. Just two years into running my own vacation rental management company, we were growing fast with 37 properties already on board. In trying to be all things to all clients, I realized I had no focus. I went back to basics, I questioned everything, and I redesigned my company with an intentional strategy of building a hospitality brand that was scale irrelevant. I'm human, I made plenty of mistakes, yet once I got clear on my brand strategy, I never again lost focus. I don't know it all when it comes to marketing. I'm still learning and growing my understanding of branding and positioning. But what I do know is that once I got clear on my brand strategy, and understood the connection with a purposeful revenue strategy, my business took a much different path. This podcast is a vacation rental marketing podcast for the founders, owners, and employees at small to medium scale vacation rental management companies. Going forward, I'm going to refer to our businesses as vacation home management companies, or VHMCs. I will collectively refer to our target audience as operators. So welcome then, operators, to our new group of Merry Pioneers. Many of our voices do not make it to the stages and forums of industry events. Our thought leaders tend to come from large companies, vendors, or external investment firms. As operators, we're often so busy working in our businesses or do not offer sufficient scale of revenue to vendor partners that we do not get wider attention nor have the resources to attend industry events. This podcast gives you an opportunity to join the conversation, get your voice included and heard. We're not building an elite industry insider circle here. However, any operator is welcome to join us regardless of who owns the property or properties that you manage and the number of properties in your portfolio. We all hit the same issues regardless of scale. Vendor partners who support us are also welcome. I also hope that there are many guests listening and contributing to this podcast. The only requirement I have of listeners and participants of this podcast is that you share a community spirit of aspirations to set in and maintain in standards of professional management. We will not win over the guest, the property owner, the public, our legislators, or industry colleagues if we fail to develop and deliver on standards of professional management at all scales. going to explore the challenges we face building focused hospitality brands in an industry that often positions the investment needs of property owners at odds with the hospitality needs of guests. This challenge is set against an industry lacking commonly agreed standards of professional management regardless of niche, scale, and who ultimately owns the properties the guest stays at. This podcast is not a how-to show in the respect that I'm not going to tell you do this and that, and then pull in a six-figure income from X number of properties a year. You can find that already online. Neither is this podcast an infomercial for my consulting services. Instead, we're going to be exploring branding concepts around the common challenges we all face building our hospitality brands, regardless of scale. I'll steer our conversation, but together, we will figure out how to tell the true story of how the guest was won. When I took on the rebranding of my own vacation home 
management company, I found plenty of information on product design, marketing, and branding. While I could find some applications to the hotel industry, I could not find anything specific to the vacation rental industry. There is no book available. So in this podcast, we're writing it together. One challenge, one episode at a time. Pioneers in the community of many. Throughout our journey, episodes of this podcast will cover the complexities of designing and marketing vacation rental products, building, messaging, and positioning brand identity. Through real-world stories of challenges that I faced in designing and building my hospitality brand, we're going to explore a suggestion that this industry does not have to be a battle or a choice between the needs of the property owner, real estate and travel industries, investors, and guest hospitality. We're going to develop the concept that if we unite all interested parties under one common purpose, then we don't have to choose between seemingly conflicting goals. However, we're going to work outside in. We'll start with the end consumer, the guest, and work backwards into our businesses and to our property owners, investors. Using real-world challenges, we will probe the link between product, marketing, and branding. And that link is brand positioning. In a twist sure to offend some revenue managers, I'm going to build a case to move revenue management out of its reactive, data-framed role in finance or sales to a proactive role in marketing with a rebranded revenue strategy identity. I'll also make the case that an intentional, strategic approach to revenue strategy is part of a purposeful brand strategy and key to the positioning of a profitable operator over the unfocused competition. This case rides in good times and periods of oversupply and softening demand. So at this point in our conversation, you're probably asking yourselves, well, gee, Andy, with so many other vacation rental podcasts out there, why do we need another one? Well, if you can figure out who you are, what you want to do, why, for whom, how you're going to do it, and what makes you different to other choices out there, then you know what? You're golden. You don't need to listen to this podcast or any podcast telling you how to do it. If, however, you'd like to join a conversation about professional standards and discovering your pivotal moment on the road to building your own vacation rental hospitality brand, then please come join us on our trails. If you're struggling with the catch-22 of meeting the needs of the property owner investors at the same time as those of the guest, that story is unlikely to have a happy ending. So join us. All good stories need a villain, a challenge, an obstacle to overcome on the hero's path to victory. As the greatest story of this industry plays out, do you want to be the villain or the hero? For this story to have a happy ending, it cannot be a tale that makes the property owner investor or the guest the villain. That leaves only one option. You. Be the hero, not the villain. The property owner investor may be very detached and hands-off when it comes to sourcing and serving guests. But at some point, we're all guests, right? If we do nothing else while building our VHMC hospitality brands, then we need to ask our property owner investors, how would you feel if this were your vacation experience? Then steer them with professional guidance that is based on meeting the needs of the guest. My pivotal moment building my own VHMC hospitality brand was when I stopped trying to be all things to all clients. I developed a unique brand strategy that united two seemingly conflicting client goals and a one common purpose that met both of their goals. Then I went to work finding clients for whom this message resonated and I aligned with them. In this story of how the guest was won, What would be your pivotal moment defining your VHMC hospitality brand? What in blue blazes is going on? So why the Wild West? The American Wild West was characterized by a time of limitless expansion, moving the frontier westwards. Such was the pace of migration and discovery of new land and resources that common standards of law and order lagged. The vacation rental industry is struggling to stabilize and find its client base in a landscape of low barriers to entry, lack of consistent standards of immunities and professional management, and even how we communicate with the guest. 
Throw capital funding gas on a fiery hot real estate market. And well, you better have checked those saddle ties as we've experienced the bumpy ride of our own gold rush the past few years. The gold rush may be fading as the real estate market cools to a glow. The wild west of vacation rentals, however, well, it's still very much in full swing. This podcast brings you hard-won advice from the vacation rental trails. In the process, all together now, we're writing the true story of how the guest was won. That's what I'm talking about. So what will the format of this podcast be? Well, in a format unique to this podcast, we're going to pair alternating seasons. Part one will be myself, solo host style, introducing the context for the topic, pulling stories from my experience as an owner-operator and also as a guest. These episodes will run around 30 minutes. Part two of each pair of seasons will be interview format. And I'm going to let these episodes run around 60 minutes. Are you ready for the plot twist in my podcast format? In part two of Alternating Seasons, I want to interview you, members of my target audience, and those outside of our industry who are our guests. This is your show, your stage, your microphone, your story. Operators, I don't want to hear about your experience as an industry insider. I want to hear what your experience is like when you stay in a vacation rental property. How has that experience led to perspective shifts in your own vacation rental operations? Or, if you're not involved in our industry, how has your experience as a guest using our product, well, how has that experience changed your perspective of our industry? And what feedback do you have for vacation rental operators and vendor partners? remainder of this preview episode, I'm going to introduce a real-life personal vacation story. Close your eyes. Travel with me to beautiful Italy. Our vacation will take us south of Rome for a week on the stunning Amalfi Coast. Then we head north to idyllic Tuscany and Venice before we return to Rome for the last week of our trip. My true story occurs not in medieval times, but as recently as September 2022, at the tail end of our newest gold rush in the contemporary vacation rental Wild West. Week one was perfect. On the stunning Amalfi Coast, our book direct experience with a company called Feel in Italy, well, it showcased a vacation rental property owner, property manager, and hosts, all working in guest-focused synchronicity to deliver as promised. Feel in Italy made our vacation Thank you so much for your great work and excellent hospitality. The next leg of our journey begins as we arrive for a five-night stop in the ancient walled city of Lucca, Western Tuscany, birthplace of Puccini. It's 8.30 p.m. on an unseasonably balmy night at the end of an unusually hot, humid, busy summer of travel. We're at the end of a long ride on unfamiliar roads from southern Italy to Tuscany. Our travel companions? My spouse, elderly parents, sister, and brother-in-law. The latter four in our group have limited mobility. Our wagons for this ride are two rental cars jammed with excited, if tired, pioneer family members, plus luggage, for an extended three-week sojourn across the best of Italy. The registered guest, our hero, yours truly, is exhausted by worry in the journey. I've navigated to the directed parking lot on the outskirts of town, and I'm troubled to see that we're sitting on a quiet intersection close to the city walls. Night is drawing in. Shadows lurk ominously in the receding light. Mosquitoes enjoy a late evening feast on our exposed skin. The parking area doesn't look like it was described by the manager of the vacation rental that I booked with on the OTA. My radar is up. I figured out by now that we cannot drive our rental car wagons to the property that's located clear across town through narrow dark medieval streets bustling with pedestrian visitors. I cannot drop our family members at the property with all of our luggage to wait in comfort while myself and spouse 
who had to park the cars to return on foot or via a taxi cab. Notice the vexed look on my face. See how I'm nibbling my bottom lip? We've only just met, so you don't yet realize this is something I do every time I'm stressed and unhappy. I'm thinking, did I mention a brother-in-law on crutches? An elderly parents well in their 80s during the booking process? I know that I specifically mentioned two elderly people in our group when I chatted with the host on the OTA during booking. I asked directly about the parking arrangements at the property. I was told that there was no parking at the property, but the parking was no problem. We could park at a city lot, which would be an easy 15-minute walk to the property. The host did not mention any access issues relative to elderly guests at the property. Neither were they mentioned in the property description or shown in the listing photographs. Well, it gets worse. I didn't discover until a few days prior to arrival that the property is in a section of the city where vehicular access is restricted to residents and taxi cabs only. At that point, it was too late to cancel. And again, I was reassured the parking and property access was not a problem. It's heading now towards 9.30 p.m. on a dark street corner, and the host staff member assigned to meet us at the property is calling me. He's irate. He demands to know where we are. He cannot wait all night. Hold it right there! I explain to the snippy staff member that as I discussed with his boss during booking, we have elderly people plus luggage. Could he please come collect us? Book a taxi cab or walk. I cannot collect you. He growls at me. After an hour of trying, I managed to find one cab, which we doubled up in two journeys. 10.30 p.m., myself and spouse finally arrive at the vacation rental property. Instead of finding the rest of the group already inside the property, enjoying a glass of Tuscan wine in air-conditioned comfort, we're disappointed to see everyone waiting on the street with luggage and snippy staff member. There's one formidable yet high-worn stone step up from the street to the entrance lobby. Once inside, I understand why everybody is waiting outside with the luggage. In the interior lobby, I notice 48 badly worn stone steps up from street level to our apartment entrance. The only illumination is one weak light bulb on a timer on each flight of stairs. The light timer expires before we reach from one level to the next, plunging us into gasping, wheezing darkness. Our group is tired, unhappy, hungry, thirsty, and not impressed. What a grand welcome to such a beautiful city. Once in the apartment, we're directed to muster in the living room to face a hurried lecture from a snippy staff member on how to reset the circuit breaker and what not to do in the property. He leaves abruptly with no assurance that anyone will call me the next morning to address my concerns that the property is unsuited to our needs. Our hero quickly degrades to villain of our Luca vacation story. I've booked a terrible property and the whole group is cranky and unhappy. Worn out, everybody goes to bed with no dinner, no wine, yet thankfully, no wine in. I try to sleep. Sleep eludes me since our bedroom has a buzzer going off every 30 seconds, making rest impossible. Our hero roams the apartment. It's admittedly beautifully furnished. It really is a renaissance gem. I understand why we were required to know how to reset the circuit breakers. Electrical outlets are overloaded. Bare wires hang out of holes in the walls. One of the two bathrooms has mold and the tiles are stained with urine. I glance at the printed welcome guide in the living room. There are printed instructions to switch the AC off while out touring during the day to save the owner money. More instructions on how to reset the circuit breaker. Battling an inhospitable Wi-Fi signal, I persevere online and chat fruitlessly with the host through the OTA portal. What did I expect booking a historic property in a medieval walled city? I was asked. It was my fault that I had not realized the property was in a restricted residential zone. That information is clearly available in the Rick Steves Travel Guidebook for Italy. 
That is exactly what the host said to me. Even though I have asked about property access and parking for elderly people during booking, my request for help finding another property more suited for our needs was denied. The company had no other properties available close by, I was told. This turned out to be an untruth since I found availability online in a single family home that the host also managed that was close by. My polite request for a refund was denied. The OTA closed my case without consulting me. I found another suitable property with another host on the OTA available close by and we relocated. The only thing our hero eats for breakfast that day was the cost of five nights stay at this apartment Plus, add an unwelcome insult to tired injury, I got a parking ticket. It breaks my heart to see my family struggling with the steps. We're abandoned by the host and the OTA. We're left alone to find more suitable accommodation close by with no help from the host who clearly messed up our booking and put us in the wrong property for our stated needs. I'm appalled to discover that this host is the owner of a professional vacation rental management company marketing luxury travel accommodation. So what did we learn from my Italian vacation story? Once I got beyond the emotional tug of a feeling of failure in providing a great vacation for my family, I sat and honestly picked the experience apart. Who's at fault here? Is it the guest, me, the OTA, the host? Is there fault to be placed? Well, let's set some context. We stayed in a total of six vacation rental properties during our three-week trip across Italy. Two were booked direct through a management company, Four were booked on the OTAs, and of those four, three were Airbnb, one was Verbo. I not only own and continue to operate my own vacation rental properties, but I also recently sold a vacation rental management company that I spent over a decade building. This trip was important to us on so many levels. It was a chance to spend quality time with family, where distance means we see each other too little, and time with aging parents is particularly precious. I also wanted to highlight the vacation rental experience for my family, a product they were unaware of and that I had been managing for a decade. This trip was expensive, but at the modest budget I set, I did not expect five-star luxury in renovated Italian palazzos and a fleet of Bentleys waiting each time we left the property. I did expect a certain level of professionalism, Having done this for a living myself, I thought I knew the questions to ask of the OTA and the host. The issues to spot hidden in listing photos, the power of what is not being said in listing description copy. While we can be quick to blame the OTAs for our experience, and yes, you can make the case that the OTAs have some role in setting and maintaining listing standards for the vacation rental operators using their platforms, Well, that being said, my conclusion here is quite different. I mentioned earlier that I consider the true villain of the vacation rental story is not a picky guest, it's not the OTA, it's not even one host or management company. The true villain is an attitude typical of a lawless frontier, an attitude that results in an operator who does not take the time to position their business with their own authentic branding by connecting with and building trust with their guest. The sad thing about this is that it's hopefully unintentional. What happened in Luca was a missed opportunity to set and maintain expectations. With my generous, rational, intellectual vacation home manager hat on, I would say that in our case in Luca, the villain was the attitude that this operator, in the rush to deliver as much revenue as possible to their property owner, they're trying to be all things to all guests when instead the operator could be aiming to place the right guest in the right property for their needs, not just rush to fill occupancy. Then again, if I put my emotional guest hat on, I would say, what part of elderly parents did you operator not get in my questions during the booking process? Did you make no effort to discover anything about your guests before accepting their booking into a property that 
yeah, many guests have had a wonderful time in, but for this guest, the property was unsuitable. Then when the mistake was brought into the open, you keep the guest's money and you gladly let them leave. Say what, Pioneer? Lean in then for the moral or lesson of our story. If you are the provider and or manager of accommodation sold for vacationing guests to stay in, then, like it or not, that places your business in the hospitality segment of the travel industry with an obligation to help guests plan and enjoy their stay. That's my opinion, of course. It's why I called my reservation agents vacation planners in my own vacation rental management company. Words matter. If you don't like that or will not do that, well, find another business. Be the hero of someone's travel story, not the villain. Put another way, let your guests be the hero of their travel story. Think about being the guest who messed up everyone's vacation by booking a bummer of a property. Here it is, our cue to wrap up our preview episode of How the Guest Was Won, Tales from the Trails for Vacation Rental Pioneers. If you want to get to know topics coming up this first season, then please refer to our website, stayattention.com forward slash podcast. And for listeners out there, if you would like to sponsor our podcast, then please go to that same link, stayattention.com forward slash podcast. So what did we learn from our chat today and what questions have we raised for further discussion? Firstly, who is this podcast for? My target audience of pioneers. Who am I? I introduce myself. What's the podcast about? Why another vacation rental podcast? Why the Wild West analogy? How is this podcast format different to other vacation rental podcasts out there? I told a campfire story to set the scene for this podcast story arc. And lastly, we have a look ahead to the first season. Up next in episode one, our first full season of this first season, we're going to be making it all about you in an episode titled Defining Uniqueness. Wise up, why don't you? We'll explore how having a clear why allows you to position your brand for success. And that's the sound of our first day together coming to an end. I always like to close out with a pun, just in case we got a little too serious with our conversation. So here we go. Sun's out, pun's out. Question, why was the social media marketer out of the office? Answer, they went on a company-wide retweet. Why was the social media marketer out of the office? They went on a company-wide retweet. Until next time, happy trails. If you have an episode topic or a story bursting to be told, then get in touch with me via email, stayattentionandy at gmail.com or through our website, stayattention.com forward slash podcast. <laughs>